In today's lesson, I want to go over another major optimization we can do in Python, and this has to do with strings. It's actually a very basic concept that we kind of miss when we are learning Python by itself. And this is the concept of concatenation, string concatenation. And usually if you have a string, you'd go ahead and say string, and that's going to be, let's say string, we'll keep it simple. Now strings are immutable, which means we cannot change the string once we have created it. If we go ahead and say string and say new string, this is not going to change the string. It's going to create an entirely new string. And the way we can actually go ahead and prove this is by going ahead and printing the ID of string and printing the ID of string again. And you'll notice that when we run this program, we're going to have two entirely different IDs. So this is actually a performance issue if you are trying to create many strings or you have a for loop that adds strings together indefinitely, you're going to see some major delays in your program. Now I actually went ahead and created a test for this concept. So if you are curious about seeing how this actually works, then follow along for this part of the lesson. We're going to start by creating a function called string concat raw, because here we want to demonstrate that we can concatenate the string in a for loop. So as usual, you would have a string that would be any string you want. And for i in range, let's say 1000, we're going to go ahead and say that the string plus equals the text of string. So this is going to add string to this string a thousand times, and it's going to assign it to a new variable called string each single time. Now in the following function, I want to show you the correct way to perform this action. So if we go ahead and type in function string concat join, and then we go ahead and create a function out of this, we can go ahead and create that string once again. And we're also going to go ahead and create a string underscore list, which is going to initially have the first string inside it. Now let's go ahead and create a for loop again. So for i in range, let's say 1000, we can go ahead and type in string underscore list dot append, and we want to append the string. So, so far we performed the exact same action, except the only problem we have now is that we have a list instead of a long string, which is supposed to be a thousand strings long. But the advantage of using a list is that we do not have to create a list each time we append a new string. It modifies the original list, which provides us a major optimization in creating this string. And the way we actually get the string back is by creating a new string and typing dot join and inside here, we're just going to join the string list. So it's going to extract all of the strings and it's going to turn it into the exact same string we would get from appending it a thousand times. And the reason it's so important that we go for this approach is that this only has to create one new string while this has to create a thousand new strings. And as you can see, that's a major optimization. Now for the rest of this, let's go ahead and actually test it using the time it function. So here we're going to go ahead and say time concat is going to equal time it and this should import the module and since it didn't, we're going to go ahead and import time it. So time it dot time it and the statement is going to be the function we want to test for and here we want to test for string concatenation row and we're not calling it here but we want to perform this 10,000 times. And we're going to do the exact same thing for the join. So here we're going to go ahead and type in join underscore concatenation. And here we need to go ahead and say join instead of the raw version. So this is going to perform each one of these functions 10,000 times, and it's going to return to us the average time of how long each one took to execute. Now below that, we're just going to go ahead and print the times. Now, actually, before we run this, I meant to write 10,000, not 100,000. So I'll fix that real quick. Otherwise, it will take too long to execute. And I'll tap on run. And you're going to see immediately that string concatenation took 0.47 seconds, while list.join took 0.36 seconds. And in terms of percent, we can go ahead and create this small function, which is going to take join concatenate divided by time concatenate. And this will calculate the percent 
and this will tell us how much faster it's going to be. So now if we go ahead and rerun this program, we're also going to get the percentage of how much faster it was. And as you can see, we saved a whopping 24% in speed, which is a major optimization, especially if you have big strings that you want to concatenate. And this is definitely something you should keep in mind when you're working with strings, is that each time you create a new string or you decide to modify a string, it's always going to create a new object of that string. Even if it's the same variable name, it's still going to create a new ID and assign that value to that new ID. It's a very neat optimization that we're not really aware of when we're learning Python, but can definitely be useful in the near future when we're creating programs that have to process thousands or millions of strings throughout the life cycle of the application. But with that being said, guys, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.